Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn a scenario and a multiple components of SSIS package. So scenario is let's consider we have some business users and we have trained them to prepare the SQL queries for update, deletes and inserts for some specific business tasks. So they have the permission uh, to write those queries uh, and take a look on the data and but they don't have permission to run those uh, inserts uh, updates and deletes uh, so what we have asked them uh, hey uh, you go ahead and write your queries in the excel and test in the dev environment what we will do we will run an ssis package at nightly um, uh, schedule and uh, then uh, we will take the queries uh, what you have prepared in excel file and execute them uh, in production uh, on those uh, tables so that's what we are going to do in this uh, demo uh, first of all uh, what we are going to learn here we are going to learn uh, how to read uh, data from excel file in uh, ssis package second uh, we are going to save that data that we will read from excel file to object type variable so we will learn uh, the record set destination how to use that one next uh, in the third uh, we are going to loop through that object type variable where we have saved those all the queries in the for each loop container and then in the fourth uh, we will be saving uh, one uh, row or uh, multiple values uh, uh, from the row in the different variables in ssis package uh, from that object type variable in for each loop the last one will be using the execute sql task to run those statements which we save in the variable one at a time so let's go and take a look so in the in the file what i have i have built some queries uh, here you can see that I have insert query that is inserting a record in customer table then I have another insert that's uh, inserting the second uh, row in that uh, or values uh, in that uh, customer table then I have update on the customer underscore NA table where I am uh, updating the created on uh, column to the get data and then I'm deleting uh, some records uh, from the customer as uh, where first name is equal to amir so i have taken these uh, all those queries uh, and put into ssms uh, so i can show you current situation here in the customer table we do not have any record as of now so when uh, will these queries will run there would should be two records and for update uh, if uh, i will see here and a customer table customer underscore na table there is a uh, null values for created on so once it will get updated there should be date and uh, the last one what we have here where we are deleting the records uh, there are two records uh, with this uh, name and when we will run our ssis package uh, these should not uh, return uh, with the, this select statement anymore now let's go to the bids uh, and uh, or ssdt sql server data tools and create new SSS, ssis package click on the project and you will be selecting a new ssis package and uh, go ahead and rename the ssis package so we'll say execute queries from excel file to read the data from excel we will be using a data flow task inside the data flow task we have to use excel source as we are reading the data from excel bring the excel source here now we have to make a connection hit new and browse to the file where your excel file is it is in the input folder in our case so we selected the queries.xlsx open it and uh, we are using excel 2007 hit ok now we are using sheet 1 go to columns and we see that queries column is coming correctly hit ok next uh, what we need to do we need to save this uh, queries uh, into uh, object type variable because I can't really loop uh, one by one uh, and use execute SQL task here execute SQL task is available on control flow and right now 
I am in the data flow so I have to save those records somewhere so I can use them I have uh, here I'm gonna use uh, the destination record set destination record set destination can be used to save the data into the object type variable object type variable is a variable that can handle or save the result set as a table in the memory so it is adio dot net type variable that we can use here so first of all we have to create that variable let's go and create a variable and we call it queries obj just uh, to see, I am putting obj so it's the object type you can put any name what you like uh, and this is going to be object so you can select from the drop down here is object and uh, that's all you need to do now here come back to the record set destination open it and here you have to provide the variable so we are going to provide our queries object variable next uh, you have to click on input columns and select the columns that you want to save in this object type variable so in our case uh, we are saving only one column that's queries and uh, we will click a refresh button here and that, that's that's going to take care of the error hit ok now we are all done if I run this uh, package now what is going to happen it is going to read uh, the records uh, from Excel and save into the object type variable but I can't really see that because they are in the memory right so I have to read one after one and use them so how I'm gonna do it I'm gonna use for each loop container here I can rename this one if you wanna uh, it is always good idea read queries you can call this one uh, DFT underscore read queries from Excel to object variable so it's good idea I really uh, always recommend uh, give proper name to your transformations and task uh, so it is easy to read the package uh, for new developers as well as for you when you come back for debugging and uh, here we are going to use that object type variable in the for each loop container go to collections and now what we need to do here we have to change the enumerator so in the uh, by default it is for each file enumerator we will be using a for each ADO enumerator so by using this one we will be able to loop through this object type variable and get to one row at a time so go to the variable mappings and here we are going to save that value that we get on each of the tration into one of the variable we can call it a var query so this is going to be string and that's the only variable we have because our object contains only one column so that's the index zero means the very first column now we are all good here we have saved that value in the var query variable so every time it is going to loop it is going to give or save one query in that variable next part we want to execute those queries so we can use execute sql task inside the for each loop so if you want to rename this one you can call it to for uh, f for each loop and say loop through queries obj variable and here what we are going to do we are going to use that uh, queries now we know that we want to run all those queries on the test database as our tables are in the test database so we need to go back create a new connection and I'm going to use the OLEDB connection type uh, you can have different uh, you can have ADO, ADO.NET or ODBC whatever your requirement is here I'm going to create a new connection now I have the connection for the test already in I use in different uh, uh, SSIS packages in this uh, uh, project so it's there I'm gonna delete it and create a new one for you so you can see so here I have to provide my server name SQL server name or you can call it SQL server instance name so that's brought us here next uh, you will provide the database you can write it here or you can get from the drop down so it is test test the connection hit ok ok now we will be using this connection manager next uh, 
what is the SQL source type? Here you can write your direct statement, but in our case, we are using a variable as we have saved our query in the variable. So we will be using variable, hit uh, the drop down, say source variable, and then we will go and say var query. That's the variable in which we have saved the query in the for each loop container from the object type uh, result set. So we are saving one query at a time in this variable. So hit OK. Now we are all set. We can go ahead and run our SSIS package. And here, if you want to rename this one, you can say ex uh, execute SQL. Maybe that's the naming convention your company is using. So run var, uh, var query variable statement. So give a proper name. All right. Now we can go ahead and run it uh, as I have showed you already these uh, results what should be uh, here there is no records uh, and once we run it we will come back and take a look now the package is started and it completed successfully so here come back uh, and take a look now the, there are two queries we have two inserts uh, and we were inserting the records in the customer table so we see the both uh, both records are inserted successfully. Next, uh, we were doing a update on a created on column for this table. And we can see that uh, that value is uh, updated updated uh, by using the get data. Next, uh, we were deleting uh, uh, some records uh, where first name was Amir. So if I, I, I ran the last time, uh, it returned us two records. This time it should not uh, return us anything. So it means those records are deleted. So that's the way you can uh, read uh, the queries uh, from your flat file, from Excel file, or uh, maybe SQL Server table as well, uh, and run them uh, one by one uh, by using execute SQL task and uh, uh, variable in the query uh, type. So here you can, say, can use a SQL source type variable and uh, you can use a file connection. You can even have the queries saved in the file and uh, you don't have to loop uh, through each, each of them. You can just run the entire file or you can write your direct input that can be is just the SQL queries or you can run, run store procedure or whatever you want to run. So thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.